All right, let's see what's going on in Gold MMR. We have a Rengar with Electrocute against a Xinjiao using Hail of Blades and a nice level 1 ward by the, uh, well, I assume by the Talia, but let's have a look to confirm. Yes, in fact, by the Talia. Didn't bother with the first part of the game for once. No invades, just a regular start. Let's see how we do. Now, very typically, Malgai's in the game for some reason. Very typically, you know, you're, you're gonna see people start on the bottom side. Like, he gets a leash down here, but... Really, should he be doing this? Now, there is a popular clear where you take this and just invade people, and I, I don't like that. It's too, like, skill cap, clickbait, doesn't really work, right? Because a fundamental good approach of jungling will always counter that. Like, if you just ward expecting it, you'll see you can adapt. If Talia puts this here and you see him go down, you see it. If you see him take this and then go to the bottom side, you see that too. And that's very counterable, right? Like, it opens up the Rengar to just take your red and your, your Krugs ahead of you. It opens up the Rengar to vertical jungle you if you invade. And while people use that as a justification to, like, get leashed on the bottom side and, you know, just full clear up, that's also incorrect. Think about it this way. You've got a Maokai and a Jin and a Leona and an Ash, right? Maokai's broken. Now, in this particular case, this player might be a little bit broken. Whoa, you never... <laughs> Minions do the work. Okay, so that was weird. But the play was weird and the noise was weird. But if you're the Xinxiao and you're looking at this game, right? What is your game plan? I'm thinking, you know what? Rengar will probably start on the red because it makes more sense for his champion. And also, you know, the red buff is kind of strong in these situations. Additionally, I kind of know that, you know, Garen and Irelia, yeah, we can kind of snowball this and you can go for the Irelia, but she has the E, she has a disengage. Is this really the lane you want to be, you know, spam ganking level three? Could you? Yes. Should you? Eh, question mark. This line too, like Talia's pretty good at shoving, Nico's pretty strong early, will snowball pretty quickly, but again, I'm just looking at it like, well, I've got an Ash who's an immobile ADC and a Maokai. I think I should gank that. You absolutely must head over to Vakayu.gg. I have a free jungle improvement resource as well as a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching VOD libraries, weekly free video content seen nowhere else, as well as Q and A's and patch note rundowns, as well as a private jungle discord. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers reach their goals as we saw with the record number of people hitting them at the end of season 13. If you want to climb faster than anyone you know, jungle diff every game you play, click the link below or head to Vakayu.gg. And you know that Leona's going to be aggressive, so automatically it's just, it just trumps everything else. Now the Rengar in this particular case is doing my preferred way of invading, which is a red side quadrant into their jungle. The Xin Chao has decided not to think about that and says, look, Talia's flashing up. I'm going to force her to flash my W. And now the Rengar is chilling over here. Again, you know, this is why we don't necessarily like it, a lot of invades. But in this in this case, the guy decides, hey, let me, let me try do this. And Talia now has a prior and we get the kill. That's why this is a better mix. Because even though in this case it works, and in some case it might not work if you're not mechanically good on your champion, I prefer the tempo of it. Because if things don't go your way, right, like this doesn't work out or the Xinxiao shows up and you have to leave, then you have your blue side to fall back to. You've got your camps, you've got the crabs, you're on the side of the map you want to be on. Whereas if you do this and you fail, oh, it's just such a horrible situation for you to be in. Your raptors into grump and the, the blue and the grump, you know, that's what I'm talking about, raptors, blue invade, grump invade. If you get it, good for you. If they see you, you lose your bottom side, and now your bottom side have been dove a hundred times. Is it really what you want? This is much more cohesive. It's a much better game plan. And you saw that the damage, even against the Shinchao, the, the, the Rengar does a good job. Now, I like what he's doing here, assuming the Rengar is going to take the red and stay on the top side. What is interesting for me is that I've made multiple videos about this as they kind of sag off here. And I don't know if the Shinchao is going to get anything. Let's just watch the Talia to see if she does. Rengar's on his blue side. Look at this. He's got nothing else to do. What's the first thing he can do after Scuttle Crab? 420 Grump? 420 Krugs? That's it. He's got to wait another 20 seconds. He's got to find something to do for 20 seconds. Now, I made a video about this a while ago on the main channel. But it was about almost a very similar situation where a jungler, let's just say this in China, the Rengar, you know, the, the, he dies. But the Rengar gets super low. So now you know the Rengar's going to go for your red, right? Think. If I go bottom side, I'm going to have a long time before I do anything again. Why don't I just leave the base with a small item advantage and collapse and kill him? And even if I don't kill him, I know he's going to take this and potentially fall back to his blue side. I will just trail him and kill him in the blue side. Now, you get all, the, all, of, this, all of these camps. He dies. You get the Scarlet Crab. You can gank top lane. You can gank mid lane. You can now cross over Shin Chao, gank the bottom lane, and prevent the Rengar from coming out of the jungle again. So I do believe, from the Shin Chao's perspective, given how low the Rengar was, we had to move back into our top side, push him off, 
punish him, kill him before he takes everything and heals up. Now it's too late. Now we're waffling and waiting around. Oh dear. And this is the difference between good junglers and bad junglers. 414, he has a look with his W. It's not up yet, guys. 417 is almost like the earliest it will ever be up. But even then, just 420 as a metric, that's when the Krugs are going to be up. That's when you can counter jungle them, especially if you know the guy that 12 CS, red Krugs, Raptors, and Invader me. That's it, you know. You don't need to guess. There's no guesswork involved when you study the numbers of jungling. And just listen to what I'm saying here in terms of keeping those timers in your pocket. Now, obviously, he has no idea what's going on, so he just falls back to his grub. And is that better or worse than taking a slightly higher risk of chasing down the Rengar a little bit? That's what you have to question. In this particular case, we like what the Rengar did overall. I do think he could have gone for the red, but he also thought, you know, Shin Chao's probably going to come up here and, and, and try and steal it because I'm low. Let me just do the Krugs. I like that philosophy a little bit. Now, obviously, in this particular case, um, we've got the whole red team chasing the Leona as we have a discussion. Rengar shows up here. No base, remember, and this is where the Rengar makes a big dumb mistake. This is a gold level error in terms of rotational ability. Do you have an 80% chance of getting anything as Rengar by helping the Leona? No. So it's better at this particular stage as we jump to the Ash getting flashed on by the Xin Chao. If we just do the Krugs. Honestly, the Rengar should have just done the Krugs on the outset. Potentially shattered the scenario. But again, it's not much you can do. You have item disadvantage. You can't necessarily go and contest all of this stuff. I think it's best for us here at this particular stage to now reset. Now in a higher tier of play, that is categorically the best play. Yeah, because you know the grubs are up, and even though the grubs are worth dying over, I know that all of this is already respawned, so I can always go for that if he decides to stay on the bottom side. Now, I'm saying that because I can see what's going to happen on the timeline, and, you know, I like the Rengar's move overall of not worrying too much about this, because I just don't feel it's worth the coin flip at all, and, you know, the Talia dies, and Shao gets more kills, and we all know with this champion, when he gets fed... It's strong, it's tough, the Ash rotates over, the Nika rotates over, Rengo's gonna show up now as well. But like, this is all results based, yeah? Because we get, okay, we almost got nothing, now we get something as a Rengar. It, it just feels like an unnecessarily, it's just an unnecessary risk of roll. Now, obviously, when you are leaving base as the Rengar, let's put it from his perspective, oh, an error has occurred in the replay, great. All right, it's fixed. So basically, the Rengar now, in theory, you want to go topside. You got the Grubs, you can steal this whole red side, you know they're doing the Dragon. There's a world where even though the Maokai has level 3 and he dies, that your whole team goes to contest this and also dies, right? We know that's a possibility. That's why we're not interested in fighting this as the Rengar with no itemization. It just isn't worth the risk. And once we see our team do this, we observe. Leona kills the Maokai, okay. The Jin's moving on up, no mana, okay. The Nico's half HP, you gotta chuck that in there, okay. She hits level 6 from that, now she can use it. Now it kind of makes sense, like, okay, looking at the HP here, maybe we could contest this. And that's a challenge that you need to learn. You need to understand to make the right play, and when your team does random things, when random things occur, you're able to react to it in the best way possible. Because there's another universe where it's better that you don't even react to this. However, in this case, you know, nice bush jump there, flash bush jump again, Malkar travels with him on the W. That's a solid rotation. I still think we... Shouldn't force that at all. It's not worth the dragon, you know, it's not worth the deaths or anything. But as a Rengo player, when you see that occur and you're like, yeah, I can get some bone tooth off of that, you do it. Now, obviously, here there is a risk that they know you're kind of collapsing in on the blue. So when you do this, pull it out, make sure you're trying to snack it up, and uh, the Maokai doesn't even get it. He has a risk. Again, he's super low. We can just turn on this. I don't. Why don't we? See how it compounds, how it compounds. This is why you are in gold and not in emerald. This invade is great if you got a double charge of smiter. And you know you can get that before the Xin Zhao will show up. Do you anticipate he goes to the top side? Yes. But you also categorically know that their whole team knows you are coming here. They saw you here last. And if they were doing the dragon, you have to assume there's some sort of vision around the area. You don't know what the vision is. Don't have the scanner up. I think in this particular case, if I'm a Zyra... I will try and take this blue away. If I'm a Karthus, if I'm a ranged champion, because I can drag this out, right, and ditch. As a melee champion, this is a lot more risky because you have to walk on up to it. And obviously, if you've done a smite, it's really, really, really not good if you lose this. However, despite the fact that we lost it, the Maokai follows us into this bush. He does a full combo here, goes for the root and the electric proc. I don't know why he's going for the root. Just go full Q, right? Use your empowered savagery here. Space in the bush, jump, Talia's right here, that's a kill for you. Even if you die here, this is a kill for you, but the Maokai should straight up be dead. 
you know, if you want, you can root him and just go back in again. Like, there's no reason for you uh, to not do that. And then after that, we're level 5. Shin Chao's level 4. We obviously have Dirk. I mean, I feel like we're strong enough to do stuff. And we've got the Tilly right here for full combo. Well, she wasted her CDs, but she has her ult. She has, it in, she has Ignite. And the Jin's not in the picture, and your bottom line's here. This is a situation where, as a Rengar, you need to mechanically turn. I don't like that we went for this. I don't like that our team did this. I like that we reacted to it. I like that we kind of decided to think outward about stealing some stuff, but that's the whole process of learning. Okay, look, that was a little greedy. I didn't have Smite. You know, I thought he would go topside, but he didn't. Okay, worth the risk for me. Kill the, kill the Maokai now. Bone Tooth. Get two stacks. Stack it up some more. 100%, that's what you're doing, because you've already done the Shin Chao. All right, you've already done the... Uh, who did he kill on the other side there with the Nico now? Might as well go ahead and get the, uh, the Maokai now. Another stack, yes, another stack, yes. Now you imagine three stacks here, I'm not looking at that, 9%. You see that? That's a big increase. Not only are you able to fall back to your Raptors and ready to get six, you'd be six already. Uh, it gives you so much potency over now this phase. Again, we don't want to force these. We want to look at the prior, look at the situation. We want to decide if it's worth it. If we can even get one and pull out with the experience, that's great. You're not looking to die for it. But if there is a fight over this, right, with the Shin Chao and everybody competing on it, and I'm level 6 and I have 3 Bone Tooth stacks, I'll take it. Honestly, it's huge. But you can see here, uh, you press tab, you see the, the grubbies are going down. You, you, know, you know you can't fight this at the stage. Just give it, a, give it up and control your cams. It's the best thing you can do. Obviously, we got 870 in pocket. There he is. And you can see, because we're reacted to all of this stuff, right? And we weren't quite sure what we should be doing in certain phases, how weird the sequencing is. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you rotate to a stuff, you're forced out of here, you get no kills, you have to do buff, buff, duff, 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 whatever, and then go back down again, your sequencing is off. Completely off. And that's always what you want to avoid. So when you get to nine minutes, 10 minutes, and you're, and you're probably like this in gold, it's because of all the things we've talked about. Now, obviously, he goes topside to take these camps, doesn't do the Krugs, does the Grumps. He's now going back to base. I don't really know why. I do like this lane gank here. Obviously, make sure you have your scanner up. Use it. There we go. We are powerful enough. We are potent enough. We are strong cats. And we're just going to kind of wait here for them to push up a little bit. We should be able to get something. Oh, that's a dead Maokai. Chuck your sapling. Chuck your sapling. Go. Oh, he's way too slow. Once the Maokai walks into that bush, you're walking up front. You're hitting the W, the, the E, sorry, and the guy is dead. Ash ults, feel like it's a waste of an ult, but we'll take it. Nice lane gank, nice. We like that. That's why I don't like cutting out Krugs unnecessarily. Obviously, he shows up here. I mean, are we really going to... We're not going to try and ult him, right? Like, we want to use our ult, but... There you go. No flash for him, by the way. A lot of roots, a lot of challenges in and out of the bush jump. Maybe a little bit too much than necessary. Obviously, you got to track the Maokai. There you go, and you die. Yeah, so, I, in general, like these kinds of trap plays, but you have to realize when you're going to be able to get a kill. Like, he doesn't need to be jumping in and out of, like, he's going so far out of the bush, right? Like, he's side to side to side to side, it's unnecessary, and you know the Maokai's respawned already. At this particular stage, I don't mind going in and burning Zalt and Ditching. You know Maokai's coming, just run away. You win, you burn something, you can bounce. Cool. Go back to base, you know? Happy days. Hydra, uh, Hydra, um, Hubris is completed, that's great. But look at this now, we got uh, just weird sequencing. You look at the map, you see that? Like, okay, the Grum's about to spawn, but like, this is down, and this was here, and this is just spawning out, this is spawning now. The sequencing is warped, and Xin again, already with the Divine Sunder, or Thundered Sky, basically, whatever, same thing. Uh, he should be rushing Titanic. Rush Titanic first, it's a way better second item spike. Just build path-wise, stat-wise, situation-wise, Hydra first Titanic is way, way better. Get the second, and you'll notice a nice big jump. And now, you know, we're going to have the dragon coming on up. Here we go. Crab fight, a crab fight versus the, uh, the Garen. Can we win it? No? So why are we even here? This is the thing, right? Like, he did a good job of saying, I can't do grubs, I'm leaving. Now, same thing for the crab. Can't do crab, I'm leaving. Now he knows the dragon's coming up, so he's skipping camps. Again, up and down. We call this spaghetti pathing. I call this spaghetti pathing. It's my term from many, many years ago, where people basically keep going over the ground they've already gone to come go back and forth for things. So if you're like at the store and you are, uh, you know, walk in aisles one through ten, and you decide 
I don't have a list, so I'm going to go aisle 3, and aisle 1, and aisle 7, and aisle 0, and then aisle 10. You're just going back and forth. It doesn't make sense, right? It's like you're buying the frozen goods as you walk in the store instead of as you leave. Because the, that makes sense, I hope. You don't want to buy the ice cream first. You buy the ice cream last. Everybody knows this. And because we didn't really get a good use of our first alt, it's all due to that early pathing. And I still think, honestly, I'm happy with the rotation to the dragon. But personally, I don't make those rotations. It's only results based, but you know me from the main channel. I don't like those rotations because now I'm stuck in no man's land, right? Now, now I'm just at Verdun and artillery is raining down upon me. And, you know, I don't want to be there. <laughs> I don't want to be there. <laughs> Get me out. And that's a really dark thought. But you know what I mean? It just it doesn't make sense. I'd rather be here on the other side of the line, relaxed and, and, and enjoying it a little bit. You just don't want to be across the middle lane in their jungle quadrant with no real fallback, no place to use your ultimate, no real objective to fall back to either. I'd rather counter jungle his soul, gank the top lane, gank the mid lane, get the grubs, take this off, ult bottom lane with the lane gank, and just have a better time using my champion. In case he didn't do that. And now we're not in a prime position to actually fight over anything. The red side have gotten such a big boon, a big lead from these plays. Even though the Rengo's now showing up, he doesn't have... Whoa, the W. Nice, nice jump and flash over the wall, but it's a Shin Chao, so... Now he's got the Sundered Sky, and yes, it's still fine when you're strong. It's still fine when you're ahead, rather not strong. He's always strong. Champion is pretty brain-dead strong. As you can see, these freebies that he's gotten, they're not good. Like, the dragon fight here is the beginning of this already. Like, you could just suppress him. Say, have a dragon, lose all topside, lose grubs, maybe I can ult this, maybe I can ult this, fall back to this no counter jungling, I can either do my quadrant and lane gank bottom lane, or I can just cut up and react and gank it, or I can just go back to base and then lane gank it again. There's just better ways to go around the pathing sequencing. So I would advise, if you're struggling to fully grasp the sort of uh, randomness of these VODs, because this is what it is, right? It's just random thoughts uh, quickly given to you. Hopefully there's something useful for you, but I have a cohesive guide I'm playing as a farming jungler. Rengo's not a farming jungler, but he kind of is also. You do want to play around your ult, you want to understand when to invade and counter jungle. He's a farming jungler that's also got that nice invade vibe to him and that snowball kindred vibe, you know? But he can also full clear and play around 6. He can do everything, basically. But you really want to focus on that level 6 uh, spike. Another guy's 626 six here. Healing's already 1330. I mean, it's just a, what a stupid item. I mean, I know they're like, oh, it's balanced, but someone's getting 6,000, 8,000, 9,000 healing. I don't think that's balanced at all. Personally. At least we get the objective, you know? Three grubs to zero. That's fine. From the red team's perspective. If we have three and they have zero, that's cool. We're gonna hold this wave as it really is one one zero. That death was a little silly. But now we just lack impact. Like we're four three zero, and you might think, okay. You know, gold five point five K. The Shin Chat is six point six K. And remember, the metric for solo carry in games being able to one V9. My my kind of break-even point is 6,000 gold. If you have 6,000 gold of 14 minutes as plates fall, you are in prime position to have strong impact in your game. The Rengar now is at 15 minutes, 19 seconds, and he's not even at 6k, and the, the Shin Chao is nice W by the Talia. Rengar's ulting it for really zero reason here. What a waste, because now you could ult if the Ash wasn't rotating, but of course she is. And, oh, Shin Chao, what a disgusting champion. Healing now is a 1631. And see, now you could ult and kill the Jin. Like, you should be able to ult and kill the Jin. The Nico's midline pushing this. We're taking our Raptors and not holding the wave. We've just evolved. And in the gold plat jungle course, really, a lot of it is about the jungle denial. Not letting the enemy, like this guy, get fed for free. And that includes getting what belongs to you and also taking a few things away from him while still incorporating that sort of low elo ideology of how do I get fed in the first place? How do I path properly? So that farming jungle video really will help you with that. And... Keep your sequencing non-spaghetti, because this is just spaghetti jungling at this point. We're running around in loops and weird pathways, and it, it's just not a good use of time as a jungler. And while our laners have not done anything, have we done anything for them? You know, it goes both ways. Now, obviously, the Aurelia takes the plate here. Sorry, the turret, the full turret. Talia shows top lane. It's a 3v2. This guy's down here. What's he doing? Activating the Herald in this? Shin Chao's just split pushing, using the grubs to get turrets. I, we like that as well. Provided, obviously, you can get it and kill everyone. Uh, if you can't get it and kill everyone, then you shouldn't overcommit beyond vision line. But he challenges the Ash, and he does hit that 
W again. Rengar's not ulting over here. This should be a dead chin shot. There we go. Look at the healing. Oh. <laughs> I feel like if you get caught out in that position, you should die. There should be no way you can turn it because you auto attack. You've got to heal. <laughs> Six seconds only. Just increase the cooldown. If you want it to be like that, quadruple the cooldown to like 24 seconds. So you get to use it once per fight. End of story. And it won't work unless you get maximum heal, like whatever the, the, the threshold is there. So if you're full HP, it doesn't proc or something like this, you know, so you don't waste it. Or it just gets converted to a micro shield. I don't know what, what like an overheal thing. But the fact that he almost killed the Ash is quite funny. 3v1. I mean, he is fed to a certain degree, but still. Anyway, personal biases aside, talking about the jungling, the, the, the Shinsha didn't really do much. He just goon squatted with his team and pressed buttons, and Rengar, this is the difficult champion. You know, you've got to understand when and why you do things, and if you don't, that's when you get compromised. Now, if you're in the situation like, well, how would I win? How would I offset my mistakes here? Well, eventually your, your mistakes do compound to a point that it doesn't matter, there's not much you can do. But the thing you do want to do is you want to control these scuttles, first and foremost. Control the rivers with the scuttle crabs, get good vision. Also control your camps at the same level, okay? If there's a scuttle crab and you can take it and get some vision, do it. Fall back to your blue side, control that as well. Don't do blue side, then scuttle. Do it first, gain some vision, take all of this sucker up, ward your jungle, try and control your camps as much as possible. And when you see a moment like this, you have to decide, can I, one, rotate and make, it, make an impact here? we got profane now, too. Can I rotate to this and clean up? Can I rotate to this and get three kills? Now, even if you die, if only two of them are alive and they can't really do much else other than dragon, it's okay because you're going to get shut down and a lot of pressure released from that. But ideally, if you're a Rengar-style champion, I hope you have a couple grubs. You know, you should have grubs. I mean, we, we all agree the Rengar should have grubs. Then this wave right here is pushable into that. I'm okay with you as a Rengar player now just swapping to split push mode. 100%. 100%. Now, obviously, in this particular case, you know they're going to push this up, win this fight, and go to the dragon. So for you, just go topside, take this, take this, take this, catch this, push this, shove this, base out. Really look to push the map in your favor. Get strong. And when you've caught up and you're up a level or two, we're already up one level, but if you're up like two, three levels, now you can start to use that split push into killing stuff. And that's the long way to win this game. You take yourself out of the bad fights, you just get golden experience, you push turrets, and you offset their macro. But now we're way too late to this. We've altered for no reason. And we're compromised. Like, there's no point going in here at all. So in these lost fights and lost situations, go splitting. Go in turrets, and that's why the grubs are kind of useful to snack for free if you can get them. But I'm glad we gave up the first batch and we had to give them up. But like, now, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know they're going to drag and go push, 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 push. And save your ultimate for escape. You know? Because you see the, the gear and you know he's coming and you can cut down here at this point. Run away. Always know how you're going to escape the split push. If someone's going to show up, am I ulting out? Am I flashing out? Am I using the plants and so on? And now look, you see they go back to the mid lane and we're going to farm our camps. Now, is this your fault? No. But if you honestly refuse to do anything ever, then you're just never winning. You're saying, you know, riot games, take the wheel. Matchmaking, take the wheel. Guide me. Coin flip me. And this is literally coin flip jungling. When you, you don't join the fights, good or bad. You don't split push, good or bad. You don't do anything. So why do you deserve to win? Now you can say, but my top laner fed, my mid laner fed, my ADC fed, yeah. But all I see is a 5-3-2 Rengar who cleaned up a few things and didn't actually do anything of use. So you don't get to complain. Because even though this is a bad fight, what can I do about that bad fight short of rotating to it and winning it for my team or creating a situation where that bad fight doesn't need to happen? Because they will send one or two to you if you're split pushing. And as a Rengar player, you've got to know to use those things. And sadly, he does not. Gets hit by a Scry's Bloom. Stands still. Isn't sure what to do. Nico's going in on the Leona here. Talia's clearing that. We're pushing that wave out. We're just slowly sitting and chilling. Waiting for one more fight. But you're not looking to really fight here. Because you guys are so far behind and they got grubs. What if they have six? <sighs> hit this plant. Let's see what's up. Hit this to see. Go back. Hit this. Let me see what's going on. They're just going to go ahead and dive for Talia. She's going to flash. What? What? Yeah, the pings there are pretty good. He's waiting too long. It looks like he's trolling, but he's not. He's literally thinking about only killing the Jin against the Maokai comp. And even then, he, like, he, he should have been able to with the right damage, but they peel him off because it's a Maokai and a Garen. Boom, done. 
a really splitting top side. And in this rare case, it looks like they actually have that, but uh, they, they were not winning this game at all. So, assassin play is kind of difficult because you've got to understand these windows. The Rengos pathing early, as I said, I wasn't unhappy with the rotation to the dragon. I'm okay with it, but you got to use that correctly. What do I do afterwards? If I can just leave that situation with a bone tooth stack and do red into raptors or raptors upside, get the grabs, control the blue side, get ahead of the Shinchao, stay ahead of him, use my old bottom lane early, use my old top lane early, something, that's better. But ideally, stick the course with the good plays. And good plays sometimes means letting your intos die. But if you get really, really fed as a Rengar, you can win the game. But that's also why we recommend playing something like that. It's just way easier. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I'll see you all in the next one.